في زيارة خاصة للمصمم العالمي كريستيان لوبوتان كشف لنا جوانب عن حياته ونظرته الإبداعية تزامنا مع الأحداث التي تمر فيها المنطقة العربية مؤكدا على ضرورة الحفاظ على الحرفية والعامل الإنساني في قطاع الموضة We're happy to have you in Dubai. Oh, thank you. How long has it been for you since you came officially? Last time, last time I came to Dubai was in 2019, just before COVID. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just before it's COVID. It's been such a long time. Did My you wife. see changes in the, in you the know, city? It's, it's a city which always changes. Yeah. So I didn't see so much changes compared to before 2019. So mm-hmm. yes, it has changed. Mm-hmm. but I, When you come here, mm-hmm. visiting from France, for instance, you always have, from Paris, you always have the feeling that things have to change. So, you know, the yeah. car is taking a different road, etc. So it has changed, but yeah. not drastically. I've been uh, watching your shows in Paris and uh, the experiences have been phenomenal because there's this beautiful intersection between the world of culture, dance, art, and in the last show in Paris, um, sports. Uh, exactly. with, the, with the Olympic uh, swimmers, you literally blew our minds away. Tell us about this world of yours, how it has evolved in the last couple of years? Let's say the two last years have been intense mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. And so one of the first things last year, for instance, mm-hmm. was if you live in Paris, the whole thing about the Olympics has been talked and talked and talked and mm-hmm. talked and talked. So I thought to do something which had to see with the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And at the very beginning, I thought to do it before the Olympics. And then I realized that probably it is better if you really want to have people from the Olympic teams. So I thought of the French national team of synchronized swimmer. It's better to leave the Olympics being done and then continue after to kind of stretch that moment of the Olympics in Paris. But also the fact that is a team, a sport team is under a lot of pressure. When, when it is the Olympics. So taking the time of those athletes was kind of impossible before the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So my first thing, I have been thinking of something that I loved, you know, after the Second World War uh, in America, you mm-hmm. had a lot of movies with music hall, with yeah. dancing and yeah. things, you know, les, les, voilà, les comédies musicales. Yes. And um, So I thought in reference to that, to do something as a comedy musical, yeah. and, but inside water. Yeah. Why water? Because it's probably where you're expecting the least <laughs> to, to see, see your shoes. shoes. That element of playfulness and magic has always been a recurrent uh, theme for you. Mm -hmm. However, this time it came in an unexpected way and place. But there's also this hidden message of comfort when you think about um, Olympic swimmers, you Mm -hmm. rarely think of them wearing heels. Mm -hmm. And your vision lately has become, I feel, more agile to what consumers need today. And that reflects in how they want to wear the shoes, not the other way around, not the, how the shoes wears them. Mm-hmm. And you are giving them this element of empowerment in the way that they move and what they need today, which is comfort more than anything else. I felt mm-hmm. there was a play on those kind of like uh, themes. I've always been uh, interested in a very, very, very different way to work with dancers. For me, it has become more important yeah. how you want to feel, for instance, a woman, how you want to feel great, how you want to feel empowered, but still with some comfort so you forget about having the shoe. You know, it's all going to be in your body language, but you're not like, you know, feeling shaking or something. Mm-hmm. That's why I introduced mm-hmm. in that show the first, I'm kind of call, calling it the trilogy, the trilogy. of the... Yeah of the third pumps. So the shape, how the, the heel is working, etc. But also the sole, which has a TPU, so it keeps the red, etc. Elements that you don't see, but which makes a difference. What would you say is um, 
the main factor of the evolution of the industry lately and how were you able to kind of keep that sense of magic that you always looked for and wanted to achieve and bring that experience to your uh, to your clients but also listen to the needs or the current status quo of the market too. Mm -hmm. like how do you see the changes happening in the industry right now? We are in the company 70% women. 70% women. And the company are women. So in a way, I've always been on the side of women. I always say, as a joke, I have also three sisters. So I always say to whatever happens, I always say, I'm on the side of women. Don't ask me anything. <laughs> if it's two sides, I will always take the side of women. So it has been important always to me to listen to Understand. what women need or what women are requesting or what are the problems, if there is a problem. But also I think that uh, what has made me stand for what I do is, first of all, is my passion for my work. I am not necessarily a serious person, you know, and what I try as a message to go through, to give through, is a message of happiness and pleasure, you know. It's a work which is dedicated to pleasure, to put a smile on your yes. face. That's important it's for happiness, me. It's happiness, pleasure and empowerment all in a beautiful mix. It's so strange because yesterday I was having conversations with a professor in the skincare industry, completely different, and we were talking about the role of women, how, uh, how little it still is in 2024. And now you're telling me mo most of your um, employees are women, which is quite amazing. Uh, to, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, the understanding is there. Uh, you're fighting against the status quo of the industry, which is uh, in, a, in an unusual and seamless kind of way. Has it been 20, 27, 27 years? That I started? Yes. 33 years. 33 years, mm -hmm. oh my God, my math is <laughs> horrible. That's why I'm in fashion. <laughs> mm. What would you say um, were the key moments that left an impact in your life, both in a positive and maybe in not so, not the, so positive? You know, kind of I have many, many memories. fantastic memories, mm. professional, and great moment which happened for me. Key moments, you know, it's weird because I, I'm going to tell you almost like a kid, you know, the first time that you receive an award. Because you know, when you work, I mean, when I work, I never think of outside my bubble in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, I think outside my bubble for many things, but in my work, I'm working, and then I don't really know if people like it or dislike it, if it's going to be discussed or not discussed, that's not an issue, that's not a problem, that's not a kind of zone of interest for me. And then so suddenly you receive an award and you have people talking about your work and it's very, very, uh, I have to say, even if it looks very vain, it's a very sweet thing because suddenly you're like, wow, you know, sometimes you discuss and your work means things to people. And that's really not a thing that you're thinking, you know, when you're working. When I work, I really think, Everything needs to look good, but I don't think of any impact, really. What would you say is your uh, message right now? Or what is the direct impact that you would like to have on the industry, on the luxury footwear industry, if I were to kind of, you know, like summarize? I would I'm say if out. I have a message is it's not necessarily about let's say the footwear industry yeah. and but a kind of if it has to see through the fashion industry yeah. it's a more global thing is that in a way you have to be the first one to trust about yourself you have to like yourself yeah. and in order to like yourself show it in your best expression i see people coming to me and say but how did you do what you did and I don't want to design shoes, but I'm interested by your story. Your journey. And exactly, mm. exactly. And I think that, you know, in a way, the message, if there is a message, is that trust in yourself and then the sky has no limit. But you really have to trust yourself. Mm.